Hello info person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss the discovery of a super bizarre planet that has now been officially confirmed to do something we've never seen before anywhere. A planet that seems to cause its own demise and its own destruction by having direct influence on the star it orbits. Or in other words, this planet is basically destroying itself by interacting with the star itself. And so let's talk about this bizarre discovery in just a little bit more detail and find out how all of this works and what this means for this planet as well. And here it's important to understand that this is what's known as a ultra short period planet. A planet orbiting extremely close to its parent star, and a type of a planet that we obviously don't have in the solar system, but that have been discovered in a lot of other star systems out there. As a matter of fact, hundreds of exoplanets have been discovered so far, with extremely short orbits below 10 days. In comparison, the orbit of the closest to the Sun planet, Mercury, is approximately 88 days. And well, unlike the solar system, here the planets in these systems experience a lot of additional effects from the star that we just cannot imagine or still don't really understand very well, mostly because the solar system planets are pretty far away. But for a few years now, there's been this really intriguing hypothesis. The hypothesis in regards to how the magnetic field of the star can possibly affect the planet if it's close enough, especially if the star is very magnetic and the planet orbits really close. And this type of an interaction was proposed for a lot of red dwarf systems, because we know that red dwarfs generally do contain powerful magnetic fields, but also various planets in extremely tight orbits. So for example, in the famous TRAPPIST-1 system, one of the propositions was that maybe the planetary and the star magnetic fields are essentially kind of enveloped, which possibly results in some really bizarre effects, such as the stripping of the atmospheric layer from the planets, because there's basically no magnetic field protecting anything from powerful eruptions that come from these stars. But for now this remained just a hypothesis, and there was actually no way for us to prove this, or to even investigate this, just because these objects were generally very far away. However, back in 2020, researchers discovered a somewhat intriguing candidate. This was a discovery of a planet known as Hipparchos 67522b, that was orbiting a sun-like star, or a G-type star, Hipparchos 67522. And even though this was 415 light years away from us, here the star and the planet were close enough that we could actually observe a lot of intriguing effects. And almost right away this planet actually became pretty popular, mostly because it turned out to be one of the youngest exoplanets we've ever seen. Its age was estimated at approximately 17 million years old, implying that this was just formed not so long ago. Which would also suggest that this planetary object very likely contained extremely powerful magnetic fields. Or at least that's what we expect from very young, relatively massive planets. And eventually it was determined that this seems to be some kind of a hot Neptune or some kind of a sub-Saturn, orbiting extremely close to the parent star, but also close to its partner, that you can kind of see in this simulation. And because this is such a young planet, it's still developing and very likely has not reached its final size yet. And well, right now this planet seems to be pretty large. As a matter of fact, it's one of the least dense known planets with a density of 0.10 grams per centimeter cube. But here this is believed to be the result of its age. And so because this is such a young planet, as it grows older and as the planet cools down, it very likely will shrink in size, becoming much smaller. And so even though at the moment it seems to be just as large in size as Jupiter, with only 5% of its total mass, theoretically in the next 100 million years, researchers assume that it's going to shrink, becoming much smaller and similar to Neptune. But because a single orbit here only takes 7 days, this was an exciting opportunity for researchers to use the James Webb Space Telescope in order to find out what's inside the atmosphere. And so approximately a year ago, in September of 2024, this bizarre giant was finally imaged by the JWST, which in the process confirmed a lot of initial observations, but also discovered things like water, CO2, and even carbon monoxide, as well as a few other things, including hydrogen sulfide and silicon oxide. In essence, confirming that it's quite likely this planet formed much farther away and eventually ended up in this really tight orbit. But more importantly, these observations confirmed that this planet was losing a lot of mass approximately one mass of planet Earth every 30 million years. 
which would imply that in the next 100 million years, this planet is going to transform dramatically, possibly changing into something a little bit more terrestrial. And more importantly, confirming that this is indeed a super exciting planet that seems to experience some really bizarre effects. And that's exactly what this recent study decided to investigate just a little bit more. In this new study, scientists from Europe decided to once again look at this planet because here they had a bit of a hunch. The hunch being that there might be a chance that this planet is directly interacting with the magnetic field of the star and is potentially causing certain effects that we normally don't expect planets to produce on stars themselves. And so here by observing this planet for approximately 5 years using TESS and an instrument from the Characterizing Exoplanets Telescope, Researchers confirmed that this planet's magnetic field appears to directly interact with the magnetic field from the star. And more specifically, it seems to trigger various eruptions, which result in very powerful flares containing a lot of radiation that then surprisingly bombards the planet itself, causing it to rapidly lose its atmosphere. And so this seems to be the first ever evidence for this magnetic star-planet interaction where the planet directly triggers eruptions on the star. And what's really exciting about this paper is that here the interaction has persisted for at least three years of observations, allowing scientists to study all of this in a lot of detail. And so even though previously astronomers always believed that stars were pretty independent of planets and the planets could not produce any effects, here we have evidence that suggests otherwise. This planet definitively disturbed the magnetic field of the star with scientists behind the study cataloging 15 separate flares that headed toward the exoplanet during the five years of observations. And all of these flares happened during very specific periods, at the moment when we would expect the most magnetic interactions. And so the planet was definitely creating these giant flares. And surprisingly, these were some of the largest flares produced on the star during this period. And so even though in many cases these flares would have very likely triggered either way, it was really the close passage of the planet that seemed to trigger them every single time. So the planet was setting off these major explosions, which would then bombard the planet with tremendously powerful radiation. And the additional calculations here suggested that this planet seems to receive at least six times more radiation than it would receive otherwise if it was orbiting without disturbing the star. And it was these powerful emissions and these powerful flares that very likely caused this planet to become so poofy and so large by heating up the atmosphere over the last 17 million years. But it's also stripping the atmosphere from the planet at a relatively fast rate. And so if this continues for at least a few hundred million years, this planet will probably actually become terrestrial or at least turn into some kind of a super-Earth orbiting very close to the star. And so here this really intriguing observation potentially explains a lot of features of this planet and even presents us with certain solutions to some other exoplanets we've observed previously. For example, the super-poofy planets, or the extreme examples known as the cotton candy planets, might have formed in a very similar way. Because in many cases these planets are also extremely close to the star, it's possible that this is exactly how they were formed too. They triggered the flares from the star, which then caused the atmosphere to expand dramatically and make the planet very poofy. Likewise, a lot of super-Earths and a lot of terrestrial planets in super-tight orbits might have also started in a very similar way, with the atmosphere eventually getting stripped and leaving just some of the more stable stuff behind. Which of course makes this particular planet exceptionally exciting for planetary scientists. Because this might be an archetype allowing us to understand how star-planet interaction influences the evolution of planetary objects and transforms them from one to another. But naturally, to confirm all of this, or to try to explain all of this, more similar objects have to be discovered first, because this is literally the first time ever this phenomenon has been observed somewhere out there. And so once we discover even more of these planets and can actually study this in more detail, we'll be able to get additional answers on why and how certain planets seem to evolve and why some planets seem to exist out there but do not exist in the solar system. At the moment though, this is definitely one of the most exciting exoplanetary discoveries in the last few years and something we'll come back and discuss again once there are some updates. Until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe 
Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support the channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining the channel membership that grants you early access and a few more extra videos. Alternatively, you can buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.